you know, the guys back in the 60s and 70s, I mean, they're smoking cigarettes on the line, you know, before GPs and, you know, you see these old pics and stuff. It was a different time. And now what you have to do, you have to train and you have to be a professional athlete. That's how you succeed at this point. Flawless. McGrath is not close enough to make a move on the final turn. It is Jeff Hemming. I'm at a gypsy. Like there's so few of you that reach the heights that you guys reached in Supercross and Motocross. There's so few of you you've known each other for forever your entire lives and you just spend your entire lives not talking and not and there's really not that many other people that you can relate to in that way or that shared the intensity of the experience that you went through for that certain period of your time and then you know you hear so many stories of guys like i mean ricky and james in the booth right now or james and chad i mean i remember chad did the podcast in like 2018 i was like bro i'm telling you right now it doesn't feel like it but you and james will 100 percent play a game of golf today and you'll 100 percent be friends you know but in the moment you just no, cannot because you're, ever see you're, that happening yeah you're you're two young guys. You guys are both going for the same thing in life, on the track, off the track. You, you know, it just becomes a competition that way. And I know that with my battles with Jeremy McGrath and that sort of thing that that people hearken back to as being this this great era and and they appreciated you know what that what that was. You know, keep in mind I got my ass kicked in Supercross quite a bit, and those nights sucked right yeah um you know but eventually you get yours and and all this but i i didn't appreciate the moment or that situation then like i do now mm. and th there's there's there were two documentaries that i watched that really changed my perspective on all of it one was on magic johnson and larry bird yeah, the other okay. was on john McEnroe and bjorn borg and seeing how, you know, tennis is one-on-one, -on -one, basketball is a team sport, but yet you knew it was Magic and Bird that were out there. The, the other players were pawns, right? But to have lived that moment and that competition within the competition and being so focused on an adversary yeah. to where it drove you to a place that you wouldn't have gone without it okay yeah. really fortunate to have had an opportunity to be presented with that challenge in life and those guys like Bjorn Borg and John McEnroe they elevated the competition and it was like yeah there's 50 people that entered the U.S. Open tournament or whatever however many it is but when we get to the finals we know who it's going to be yeah and it's it's and these guys were like the rest of you are all in the way you're just steps on the way to what the goal is the goal is we we've got to do this you know and that i appreciate that you know even with the failures even the the shit times the 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 times where i was victorious and and became the champion it really made those those uh those victories and all that really special like yeah. really gives it some weight you know yeah that's a that's a really cool way to to put that and you know i think about what it what it does globally for the sport like you think about you think about what your battles with jeremy did for guys like ricky carmichael and james stewart and travis pastrana mm -hmm. it's like you you elevate it takes guys like you to elevate the sport to a new level. And then that then becomes this new baseline for reality of like, this is how fast you can go on a supercross track. This is how fast you can go on a motocross bike. And then the next generation just brings that level from the start. And then they mm. get into a rivalry and do, yeah. Jer like James and Ricky and some of those battles are just out outrageous <laughs> like yeah the, the, i mean there were you know. i mean there were times where james ricky chad 
they might qualify three seconds faster than whoever else yeah. was not in that group. I mean, <laughs> just just like totally totally different levels, and um, and the fact that that you push each other, um, that if you want to be great, if you if you want to be the champion, here's here's what you have to do, and you know there are fans that that love McGrath, fans that were super supportive for me. And they get to then go to the race and have that, have that thing, you know, and there are certain riders, even riders today that will be, make a, a fantastic living in the sport. Yeah. Um, and have levels of, of, uh, uh, you know, of success. That'd be great and all that, but what you're going for, the goal should be that thing where you're at the very top and to 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 be able to live that and and also you know you have to have respect for the adversary um that when it, it like if second sucks then what did the champion actually do you know yeah. and i taking it back kind of the broadcasting is i want to make sure that they realize that the fans realize that adam intignap qualifying 22nd he is a bad motherfucker yeah. So without saying it, Dungey won the race. So what's that make Dungey? If the guy's twenty second, you know. And then in this thing with this rivalry is, you you take the first and second, and they swap it back and forth. And pretty soon you just start to elevate yourself from everybody else. The other guys are trying to get in the mix, but but we've seen it time and time again. That very rarely can you keep three guys in the championship that that's what's really special about what's happening like right now yeah with with supercross here in america but at that level normally it sorts out to two because you really just start to you start to clip who wants it the most you know and um most of the time it it becomes between two guys willing to give it whatever they got to give and somebody's going to win and somebody's not we are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site gypsytales.com packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.